let's crack into number 86. This is the MTB's Pro Series or Pro Tier uh, of the, uh, the retail in-store purchase boxes. Welcome back, Hocaholics. Uh, late evening. Decided I'd give this a try. Box 86, this time in the Retail Pro Edition. So, you've seen I've gotten the uh, the Retail Elite version of the, of the uh, Mystery Tackle Box. Uh, I saw this there, and as I am ever so searching for number 96, I saw this one, number 86, but it was in the Pro. So I figured, why the heck not? I have... I've seen the Elite. We all know what the regulars look like. I even opened up one of the um, the uh, mother loads. <clears throat> so check that video out um, if you haven't already. It's a very good video to look at, uh, especially if you're if you want to know whether you're getting a good value. Because the mother load is a huge box full of baits. Uh, if you don't have a whole lot of tackle, if you really are looking for that first-time angler or that novice angler to give them a great gift, uh, these are things that I hope are giving you a little bit of uh, information and influence into your decision-making as to whether to go for these as sort of like a, you know, a birthday gift, a Father's Day gift when that comes around, etc., Mother's Day gift for the anglers in your, uh, in your family. Because um, that's really what I think these are, are pretty much geared to. That or if you're on a, a vacation and you don't have anything and the past time comes up and you're like hey run down to the store grab one of these take it out to your to your little summer uh rental grab a pole while you're at walmart or what have you and uh, or dicks and pick up one of these boxes and this will give you a fishing trip to uh to, to you know abide some good time on the water and uh, maybe even bring home dinner for the family you never know uh with that all said basically these are just like the um you know your mail order version uh, only you're buying it direct from a store rather than getting it in the mail. So you don't have to wait for shipping. Um, they are a little bit, uh, you know, they're hit or miss, just like your your standard mystery tackle box. Now, they come with those sleeves on the outside, which will separate which one is your elite, your pro, and your uh, standard. Um, but inside, they're all pretty much your, your basic brown cardboard box. So... First looks, because I haven't seen this, what do we got? Hopefully there's something juicy in there. I see plastics. Oh, okay, definitely got some plastics. So, there are what's in the box cards. I've gotten some that didn't have a card. Ooh, we got a repeat sticker. That's a cool sticker. That's good, somebody's going to enjoy that. Uh, we've got another Dibble Digest that comes in all their boxes. Uh, repeat Dibble Digest. I have like like seven of these things, all the same. So I'm not even going to bother with that. It's getting tiresome. We do have a card this time, a What's in the Box card. With the Pro tier, we're getting two, four, six, seven baits. When you buy these, you'll get seven to eight baits in a Pro box. Uh, I think it's 12 or 15 baits, I think, are in the Elite ones. So you're, you're really getting a quantity box. Not necessarily bad or good quantity, or in quality, but you're definitely getting quantity. As opposed to your standard pro box that you get in the mail, you might get um, five or six baits, where here you're guaranteed seven to eight. All right, so on our list, first, Weston's Ricky the Roach Swim Bait. Oh, I know this one. All right, that is pretty cool. So a Weston Lures, um, WestonFishing.com. This is Ricky the Roach, and it is in lively roach color. It's a sinking swim bait. Let's take her out of the box. This will go with my uh, my light stuff. Seven grams. Sinks to eight, eight centimeters, seven grams sinking. 
So, nice, small, three-jointed, or excuse me, four-jointed, hard plastic build swim bait. So you've got your nice long bill, split rings included. The head is jointed, which gives you that great red gill flash, which is always, uh, I do like that when they, when they paint the gills and then the head joint moves. I have uh, other baits similar to this. You've got your main body, trailing body, and your tail. Tail is hard plastic, just like the rest of the, of the bait. It does have some nice accurate, um, uh, you know, pectoral fins. Doesn't have any dorsal fin or anal fin. Pretty good, and, and it's a definitely a, a good swimming action because you can definitely see the, the S waiver that this is going to make in the water. Not bad, very tiny, tiny hooks. Very good for pan fishing, especially the cold water. You'll get down deep. You can tick this across. Um, it dives to one meter, zero to one meters. So uh, that's not bad. So it's relatively, you know, sh mid shallow range. So that's pretty cool. And it's a small little bait. So I'll, I'll probably keep this with my small tackle, my light line tackle. Um, definitely good if I want to catch some small yearling uh, bass or, uh, or crappie, probably. Any kind of predatorial fish. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Now, unfortunately, they don't leave prices on these. So... I can give you the idea, but I can't really give you a price on these items uh, because these, unlike your, your mail order version, they don't list what you would get them at shopcarls.com. But you can certainly go to Shop Carls, uh, use, you know, the search engine, find Weston's Ricky the Roach, or, you know, Google it, and you'll see basic averages of what they sell for here, there, and everywhere. I do suggest if you're trying to get a good, solid estimate, don't go for your eBay auctions. Go for uh, you know, actual sales at, uh, at storefronts. Uh, next on it, Strike Pro's Beakster. Now, we got this before. We had this a few boxes back. Yeah, the Beakster. All right, this is in that, what is this? The, uh, this is the 90 in IU. It is 3 and 9 sixteenths, and it's 5 sixteenths of an ounce in weight, and it dives 4 and a half to 6 feet. So this is a really good uh, spring bait because you're going to catch those fish. They're still down in those low-lying areas as they're coming up. As the weather uh, changes and the, war the water warms up with the hot summer days or spring days into summer, then you'll start being able to go to more shallow and shallow baits. But right now, uh, or if you are in summer, you can still use this. If you get those cold snaps that occasionally come through in, you know, April, May, uh, into early June, at least for me in the Northeast, uh, and then those fish might back off and back down into the, at those ledge points, um, drop down into a little six, eight foot uh, water. You can you can fish this right along those ledges, and uh, and that'll help catch you those fish that back off when there's a rainstorm or uh, a cold front that comes through. Meanwhile, in this period of time right now, excellent, excellent bait. I always do like amber colored uh, baits, especially if they have some transparency on the bottom to give you flash. All right, so that is, again, the Strike Pros Beakster. Next, from Guggen Squad. So we got a Guggen Squad bait. <laughs> again, this is like the fourth, the fourth spin bait. Sexy Shad, same color. I've got like four of these. Um, nothing against Guggen Squad. I'm not really particular for Guggen's brand anything. I just like brands that work. It doesn't matter who makes it. Uh, but Catch Co., this is a 3 8 you get your Colorado and your Willow Leaf, which is what I personally prefer. I like the Colorado's Thump, the Willow's Flash. I like to pair those blades up rather than run an all Colorado or an all Willow. The only time I'll run a single style of blade is typically a one blade spinner blade bait, which would be just a Colorado blade. And that's what I would run basically in really dirty, dirty, uh, you know, chocolate milk water. Next up, Perfection Lures Shore Hookup Shaky Head. All right, we know what this is. This is David Dudley's Perfection Lures Stand Up Jig Heads. Um, again, these have those two antenna that always help make sure that this thing sets up, especially with craw tailors, trailers, uh, or uh, you know, little swim baits, any kind of really finesse rig style bait. Um, 
this works really, really well. Um, again, those antenna, make sure even in soft, muddy soil, it lands and it rolls up and it'll give you a nice uh, defensive uh, position and as well as hard, hard surfaces if you have hard bottom. Um, it's really good that you can actually use this to feel along those antennas ticking across rocks or stumps or whatever. You can kind of sense them uh, as the head hits things and those little uh, antennae kind of tick across as you're dragging it slow on the bottom. That's a really cool uh, jig head. Maybe we'll find in here, and these are in the green pumpkin, I think. Uh, black. No, nope, green pumpkin. So these are the green pumpkin painted heads. So maybe we're going to find a trailer in here to go with that. Uh, three more to go. Big Bite Baits, Creature Bait. Big Bite Baits, Creature Bait. There you go. So here's your, here's your Creature Bait to go with it. We've got some Big Bite Baits. Basically, it's their brush hogs. It's their brush hog Creature Baits in green pumpkin to match the green pumpkin heads there. These are the Pro Series Big Bite Baits. I have tons of these. I love brush hogs. Um, always refer to you on how to properly... Uh, you know, rig them on your hook. Uh, not so much a problem with the with the stand-up shaky heads, but uh, if you're Texas rigging these, always remember to run it over your finger and see which way those two flange appendages on the back will open up. You want to make sure that when you roll it over your finger, it'll open up and open the uh, the hook gap rather than turning it upside down. If you roll it and it starts to close, you know which way to make sure your hook point is hooking up in the right direction. With every soft plastic, there is 99.9% .9 a right way and a wrong way to rig it. And if you get caught with the wrong way, you're going to definitely lose bites, lose fish, uh, lose your hookup ratio. Um, there's only a handful of soft plastic techniques that I know of personally, um, most people don't use, that actually rigging it wrong is the right way to rig it. Um, that said, trade secrets. <laughs> Sweet Spot tackles finesse worms. So here's here's a company I'm not really. I don't think I'm that uh, accustomed to. Let's see if I can. Open this. Okay. Um, I've had a few things from Sweet Spots. These are some finesse worms. Let's see if I can get a better one. That was kind of janky. There we go. There's a, a better one. So this is a finesse worm. Flat po uh, top mold poured. Flat poured. So you got a black, blue, with blue, silver flake, a little finesse worm. It's got a little bobble on the tail end here. Nice head, and it is flat on one side. So it's a hand pour, flat mold. Uh, bait. You get a pack of three, four, five, six, I think. Feels like six in there. Of the sweet spot tackles, little finesse worms in black, blue, blue flake. That's not bad. And finally, something I do love, and this is an excellent, excellent color. In Shell Cracker, unfortunately, it's only a four, four count, but this is one of my favorite colors from, uh, from Bruiser Baits. This is the Bruiser Baits Crazy Crawl. So this is a really cool crawl trailer. If you've got a jig head and you're looking for a bluegill profile, um, Shell Cracker color from Bruiser Bait is awesome. You've got the bottom that is straight up like a, a green pumpkin um, and then you've got on the back this beautiful blue and silver glitter pattern on the on the back. So this on a, on a nice jig head, this on these Dudley, David Dudley stand-up jigs from Perfection Lures, that right there is a money deal for catching small mouth, large mouth, um, fast, whatever, whatever you're really angling for that do forage on both minnows that'll or bottom feeding fish or of course craws. Great thing about this, these are one of those that have those little flanges on the claws so it catches a lot of water and it does do a great fluttering kicking action. They don't have a whole lot of extra appendages as far as antennae so it does give you a slightly more muted um, action and profile and uh, you can even um, you know, rig these backwards where you're actually, for punching, these work really well. Texas rig these work really well. And I've rigged these backwards with the hook point down here and the line tie up here. And in doing so, this will skirt away from you. There's a few baits. This is one of them. 
I tie, I put a nail uh, weight in the in this tip, a small nail weight, rig my hook backwards, and I'll flip it in uh, to uh, to cover up against docks or or up and against like lay down brush off the bank, and uh, this will actually swim away and set down in the water, and then I can kind of jerk it around and jiggle it, and it'll wiggle, and then I can retrieve it back, flip it back in, it'll swim away. So it gives me a little bit more distance on my on my flip and, and pitch uh, casts um, because I can train it to go away from me. Really, really light nail weight um, and then, uh, you know, a stout wire hook because if it does get hung up, you're going to need to be able to wrench it back out. Pretty good durable plastic also for bruiser baits. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, this is only a four count, but it is an excellent color and uh, worth it. So that's it for, for this particular box. So again, you only got, uh, you know, the bare minimum, like they say, you get seven or eight baits. Um, we got the seven in here. Not bad. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think this was worth, uh, worth purchasing? Is this something that if you were out on vacation, out on the boat and you lost your tackle or you just ran out of tackle or you just wanted to try something different, you were getting bored, not getting bites on your standard go-to um, bread and butter baits, something you just run into the store during lunch, grab a box, take it out onto the boat, onto the bank, and uh, see what you catch. Does this kind of uh, appeal to you? Let me know. Drop some comments down below. As always, I appreciate all of you spending some time with me. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe and share if this is your first uh, first inkling of the hookaholics here at Foulmouth Fishing. Um, I'm trying to get to the All Elusive 1000 uh, for subscribers, but when it happens, it happens. I'm in no great hurry. But I appreciate all those loyal uh, viewers out there that have stuck with me since day one or day 21. doesn't matter. Um, I just love the fact that all of you are willing to spend a little bit of time with me, see these, these baits, uh, chat a little bit. I, I enjoy the interactions. So as I've been doing, I want to add a little question to you in the community. So... All you guys out there, what is your fish species of choice? Do you have a, a fish species that you tend to go for? I'm sort of a multi-species angler. I like pan fishing. I like going for crappie and bluegills. Um, I don't eat fish. Shocker. I'm a catch and release fisherman. Um, the only seafood I really like is lobster, mussels, and mako shark. Black and mako shark on a grill, oh, to die for. Um, I love salmon fishing, I love bluegill fishing, I love crappie fishing, uh, I am particularly uh, a Micropatus salmoidus fisherman, um, so that's, who can answer what species of fish that is? There you go. Um, but that's my primary freshwater fishing. Uh, when I go saltwater fishing, I fish for, uh, you know, flounder and fluke, uh, I fish shark, I fish uh I wanted to go tuna fishing more than anything because um, uh, where I grew up with, they would go out off the Barnegat Light Inlet, head out and go tuna fishing. Um, so I might actually have to get myself a little excursion out there sometime soon, get back out on a charter boat and, uh, and check that out. But in the meantime, I'm happy where I am living now that uh, I have a couple of really nice fresh waterways freshwater fisheries that I can catch all kinds of little species, uh, including some, some pike, um, mostly chain pickerel, because that's Jersey for you, um, and a few musky uh, spots. So I'm enjoying that. Um, what is your favorite or choice fish? What, what fish, A, is your favorite fish to go for? And two, do you recall what your first fish was? Like, what got you into the joy of fishing? Do you remember what the very first fish you caught on hook and line happened to be? Um, I'd like to get some stories. I'd like to, I'd like to get some, some context from all you uh, loyal people out there watching us, all this Hookaholic fan club. So I appreciate your time with me. Again, did you like the box? What's your fish species of choice? Can you tell me what my number one fish species, the uh, Micropatus salmoidus is, and do you recall what your first fish was? Thanks for spending a little time for me, as always, from me to you. Um, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace.